It's one of the most important meetings in anesthesiology and intensive care with participants from around the world gathering to enhance their knowledge, share techniques and network to save and improve lives. We're at Euroanesthesia 2021 and this is Euroanesthesia TV. Welcome to the virtual Euroanesthesia TV studio as we kick off our 2021 edition of the show. It's a challenging time for anaesthetists and intensivists across Europe and the world. But as the meeting gets underway virtually, there's never been a more important time to reflect on and recognise the great work that you're doing. Coming up on Euroanesthesia TV, we hear from some of ESAIC's hard-working committee members about the successes of the last year and plans for the year ahead. We'll also take you on a tour across Europe and to the US and China to check out some of the world's most exciting research and clinical care initiatives. Remember to like and share the show and make sure to check out extended versions of everything you see here. There's plenty more to find on Euroanesthesia TV. First, let's take a visit to Shibo City in China to see how No Pain, Labour and Delivery Global Health Initiatives are collaborating with Chinese hospitals to improve outcomes for both mother and baby. In 规范了无痛分娩和五分钟即可包工厂的流程we actually got the very positive results from um, uh, collaborating the hospital, which is about 108 hospitals. The uh, maternal and fetal outcomes get dramatically improved. What we see is cesarean delivery rate decreased. We see forceps rate decreased. We see, interestingly, blood usage was decreased. We see all the baby data get better. Safer care for patients there, a key aim for the NPLD initiative, and that's an essential part of the work ESAIC is doing. For more on that, let's hear from ESAIC's Patient Safety and Quality Committee. The ESAIC motto, Together for Patient Safety and Health, is more relevant than ever. During these months of pandemia, the Patient Safety and Quality Committee has been adapting to the situation by addressing rising patient safety issues as professional well-being or patient engagement, running online activities, and planning for new and ambitious projects with the support of our partners. The ISAIC already provides online contents and high-quality patient safety education in English language. The ISAIC now designed a stepwise education program on patient safety aimed to be available and affordable for all anesthesiologists and intensivists in Europe and beyond. The Safer Care to Save Life programs will help implementing a modern patient safety culture throughout the continent, allowing every healthcare provider to receive, and finally being certified in, patient safety training as part of their continuous education program. I'm excited to be able to tell you about the peer review in patient safety in anaesthesia and intensive care project, or PRIPSAIC for short. Uh, in a previous project examining the impact of the Helsinki Declaration on Patient Safety and Anesthesiology in European practice, we visited a number of hospitals and it occurred to me that actually anaesthetists could do this for themselves. So in this new project, we'll be working in four or five European countries to set up networks of anaesthetists within their departments who will be able to visit each each other and use our uh, evaluation process uh, to improve patient safety for themselves. So Patient Safety and Quality Committee is already contacting national societies of anesthesia to run these projects. But we will always display the information in our website and we are always open to uh, new 
Patient Safety Equality Committee members' positions that will be advertised, and we encourage everybody to join our team. Thank you very much. Make sure to get involved in those exciting new projects. Now, with more innovation in patient safety, let's hear from Edwards Life Sciences. They're using AI to determine the likelihood that a patient will suffer from interoperative hypertension. One of the main challenges that the physicians are faced with in the perioperative pathway is uh, what we call hypertension. This is a drop in the blood pressure of the patients. Edwards Life Science is pioneering the field of artificial intelligence for anesthesia and intensive care. The Hypertension Predictive Index, HPI, is the first predictive algorithm that is brought to these specialties. HPI is the most important thing I've seen in the last 10 years in the field of uh, anesthesia monitoring. We have the opportunity to change our management from a reactive blood pressure measurement, that is waiting until the hypertension occurs and then treating it, to a proactive treatment, that is preventing the hypertension before it actually occurs. And this is a real game changer. Everything we do is through collaboration with physicians. And we're going to continue to use artificial intelligence in order to help them address unmet clinical need to improve patient safety. To Austria now, just a few years old, Kepler University Hospital is a young and vibrant place, no more so than within their anesthesiology and intensive care team. Let's hear from them. I chose to work at Kepler University Hospital because of the medical diversity in the Department for Anesthesiology. 24 years ago, I chose this hospital because of the opportunity to get a road spectrum uh, education. It delivers every field of anesthesia one would imagine in education for, for being an anesthesiologist. Being a young hospital gives a lot of opportunities. If you work in a well-established hospital where all the borders and all the goals have been set for many, many years, there is not too much place for development. In our setting, if you are young and strong and have enough power, you can change nearly everything. For me, Kepler University Hospital is the place to be for learning and practicing anesthesia, uh, intensive care medicine and emergency medicine in, in the region of Upper Austria. Playing a key role in bringing new anesthetists and intensivists into the world and enabling them to perform at the highest level. The European Diploma in Anesthesiology and Intensive Care is an integral part of a huge number of hospitals' training programmes. But 2021 hasn't been easy. With more on their challenges and successes, it's the ESAIG Examinations Committee. 2021 was an extremely challenging year for the Examination Committee. We had a need of changing quite a lot of personnel both from the staff point of view and from the members of the committee. Despite the quite serious uh, uh, restrictions in relation to the pandemic, we succeeded to uh, raise the standard of the exam compared with uh, the previous year. This year we had a plain sailing, no problems whatsoever, despite a record number of 3,000 candidates that they were registered for part one. We succeeded to run all 18, which is a record number of exams for the part two without any glitches. Ola is used in many countries. Some countries, uh, they just recommend to use Ola for the training of their residents. And some countries, for example, uh, the Netherlands, Moldova and Argentina, uh, they are adopted Ola as the national examination in anesthesiology and intensive care. One of the recent developments of OLA is the organization of the home online assessment, OLA. The candidates can take uh, the HRLA in their homes. In this year, the first HRLA was run successfully with uh, more than 1,000 candidates. In, in general terms, our plan for 2022 is to solidify the uh, relative success of the 2021. 
we have to accommodate the increasing success of part one with expanding the part two, especially in Europe, but also worldwide. So we will have potentially 20 centers in seven languages with uh, almost 1,500 candidates in 2022. And uh, we expect our new team, both from the doctor's point of view and the staff point of view, to continue uh, carrying the flag of SAIC, representing with pride and honor our exam. Now to another team adapting to new circumstances. Let's go to New York. The Critical Care and Pain Management Hospital for Special Surgery are working hard to improve the lives of patients in the most challenging situations. Anesthesiology has changed tremendously in the last few years, and we've had to adapt to the changes in what's required. So the largest changes that have occurred are moving more peripherally in terms of our anesthesia and pain management. We're now numbing smaller and smaller nerves more distally, and the advances in ultrasound guided imaging has allowed us to do that. HSS is rated one of the top orthopedic hospitals, if not the top orthopedic hospital in the world. There are many reasons for that. The biggest reason, I think, are our exceptional outcomes. Our anesthesiologists focus on one thing, orthopedic and regional anesthesia. The department is a mix of an academic and private group, and we really have the best of both worlds. We are completely focused on clinical care, academic excellence, and administrative excellence as well. Now we head off to Dublin. The Irish Critical Care Clinical Trials Network has been working hard since 2015 to improve outcomes for critically ill patients by providing a robust critical care research infrastructure across Ireland. The ICC CTN's work to date has had a number of significant positive impacts for patients and their families, clinical practice, society and the economy. Any research group is actually made up for the strength of its members. And in our case, our members are ICU clinicians, nurses and allied health professionals in ICUs working across Ireland, Europe and within, in other collaborating countries. What I enjoy about working with the CTN is that you, you know you're going to make a difference. I'm an ICU nurse for 20 years and what we did 20 years ago and what we do now is very different and that's because of research. So knowing that you, what you're going to do, what we're doing at the bedside is going to make a difference for patients and help improve their outcomes. The majority of our trials are investigator initiated studies. So these are studies that doctors and nurses and allied health at the bedside see as important questions that need to be answered. That's almost it from us here at uh, Euro Anesthesia TV, but we've got one more important message for you. As we go into 2022, let's hear from the Education and Training Committee. They've got some very exciting plans for new ESAIC education programmes. In the past, educational activities have always been a kind of complex issue within the society. Over the years, several high-quality educational offers uh, were provided, but this without a clearly defined strategy on projects and initiatives. Starting from 2022, we will offer our members a fully developed one-year educational program on what we will call Education Tuesday, in which different topics will be discussed. The choice of topic is made based on the input of all individual members and all SAE committees. This summer, an educational needs assessment survey was conducted by the e-learning committee uh, in collaboration with the other education committee. We received around 700 replies from 79 countries. And during the current COVID-19 pandemic, the e-learning activities are thriving. But what happens after it? And almost 90% of the answers were super positive to continue online education in the future. We've used the survey answers to plan the next set of webinars up to the summer of 2023. And the goal is to make the ESAIC a top education destination for anesthesiologists all over the globe. The pandemic has demonstrated that having an education and training strategy which is fit for the digital age is essential. 
As always, we will organize 10 webinars next year, but November will be special because we will launch the theme of the month, which is a learning pathway on a specific theme. We will increase the number of podcasts in 2022 and then specifically organized by trainees for trainees, there will be the live on Facebook. We hope Education Tuesday will become a permanent fixture for our community, especially considering that all the activities I mentioned will be free for our members. That's it from all of us here at Euro Anesthesia TV for 2021. But it's only a few months now until we'll see you again in Milan. Remember, there's much more on all the projects we've featured in the show on our Euro Anesthesia TV playlist. So make sure to watch, subscribe and share it all. From now, stay well, keep up the great work and let's look forward to a brighter future in 2022. So until Milan, it's goodbye.